Let's head across to uh, New Zealand now, and uh, Selwyn Manning joins us to update some news. G'day, Selwyn. Yeah, g'day, Peter. Hey, are there any Kiwi uh, Christmas songs? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's there's one uh, that came to mind, um, and it, uh, I'm not too I'm a bit monotone to sing over the year. I think you might turn your uh, listeners off, Peter. But it kind of has that tune where it goes uh, and a and a, uh, a pukeko in a put and a puka tree. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, if, if you know what I mean, it's kind of like the partridge in a yep, pear yep, tree type of thing. Oh, it kind there of, we go. Yeah. Yeah, oh, fa- that fantastic. Well, maybe we'll, we will get you to sing a couple of verses one week, maybe <laughs> just before Christmas. <laughs> oh, I'll have to practice. <laughs> or maybe, maybe well, I'll just tease you. Maybe I won't put you on the spot like that. <laughs> All right, let's get on to political issues. Yeah. So uh, we're a week and a half uh, in from uh, from your, uh, your election. Um, the National-led government struck coalition arrangements with both ACT and uh, United Future Parties. Yeah, that's right. Now, the United Future Party, um, it, it's been in coalition arrangement with the national-led government uh, in the last term, so that's pretty much as read, things continuing on. But um, the arrangement with the ACT Party, uh, with the uh, new ACT leader, John Banks, has certainly um, turned you know, the, the, the country's attention on to really what the government has in store here. Now, remember last week um, we, we reported on your programme, Peter, that uh, the Prime Minister, John Key, was saying that the new national-led government would be a moderate centrist party. Mm-hmm. Um, but certainly, if this uh, this policy is anything to go by, it's anything but. Uh, this is very much uh, in, in that quarter of uh, you know, the, the, the right end of the economic spectrum uh, from an ideological point of view. And what I'm talking about here is uh, the intention to roll out policy, uh, or charter school policies um, throughout New Zealand. Now, there will be trials of this particular policy in, in South Auckland and down in Christchurch and really what, what it's all about is it's uh, separating the role of the state or the Ministry of Education having a role in running the schools or governing the schools or setting the curriculum. Now what, 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 what they do here is they set up a charter school uh, that now the, 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 the uh, facility all the buildings will be owned by the state and uh, there'll also be taxpayer money funding the school in large amounts uh, but there will be an arrangement where a uh, charter school can um, have business entities uh, managing the school instead of the state running it, um, or, or principals running it, or the administration being under the guys uh, under the governance of the board of trustees. All of that would go, uh, and they would uh, the the, uh, the new business kind of model would set up uh, the curriculum, um, and also the length of the school day. Um, and it would pay the teachers on a performance base um, uh, due to a contract that they would run individual contracts with those particular uh, teachers, Peter. So So this this would be effectively like a state-funded private school? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you were looking, you know, if you take the ideology away and uh, some of the um, stated risks from from educationalists, you know, you could see it would be an amazing kind of investment for business people if they don't even have to... uh, um, provide funding for some of the core base, you know, um, uh, running of the uh, of of the entity. But like we know, you know, some of these social um, um, provision kind of areas like education and health are essential. And uh, it seems that really it's caught Kiwis by surprise. This one, Peter, uh, wasn't mentioned in the election campaign at all. Mm. Is it just private businesses that could be running the, the these schools under this this charter schooling, or could other groups? The yeah, other groups, um, it can be uh, it can be churches, it can be community groups, it can be um, Maori groups, um, trusts, anything, any any kind okay. of entity. And uh, the, the significant difference um, is, uh, the, like for example, I should roll it back a bit. We do have a, um, a school in South Auckland called uh, Beds Main Freight Primary School, and mm. it has um, Main Freight, the company, um, as its significant sponsor uh, that helps to lift. Um, it's funding in a sense, like it's a social kind of extension of that company where it um, yeah, puts money into the school on a yearly basis and that tops up the government, uh, government amount that comes across. Um, th- that works and it has been working for well over a decade and it works very well, but um, the difference is there, Bears Main Freight has always had um, the curriculum set by the Ministry of Education. It, it employs qualified teachers, um, the administration is through a you know a principal all, all licensed and registered in the econo- in the education sector now this this plan is significantly different in that the only connection to to the government is the funding coming across and then 
the, the businesses set up the rest. Uh, the, the teachers do not necessarily need to be qualified teachers, uh, so it's up to the up to the uh, the business basically to to set those uh, parameters and the agenda and the curriculum agenda. In the United States, uh, the model has been running for some time um, and it has mixed reviews. Um, uh, there, there have been surveys that show, uh, for example, 17% of these charter schools performed significantly better, while 37% performed worse than, than uh, state-run schools. So with, with this one, uh, you've got to, going back to the politics of it, um, what it does seem to send is a signal on, on the ideology of what this new national-led government is going to be here. And we, we suspected um, in the last three years that, yes, it was reasonably centrist and moderate, um, but we suspected from some of the rhetoric that was kind of just leaking out a little bit that what they were going to do in this term was to take away a lot of the uh, centrist position kind of politics and really go for the ideology. And Mm. what we're seeing in this instance is quite a difference between the ideology that this represents and going back to what the national-led government did in the 1990s when it was in power. Back in the 90s, if we compare... Uh, it, it was kind of not into building state facilities. Um, it was more into privatising out uh, essential services w- in, into um, private-owned facilities. Uh, but if you compare to this this period, it seems that state facilities like schools and potentially hospitals, um, uh, that it's into owning those buildings, but it's into allowing the business and private sector to actually operate them, right, right. and that's the difference. Yeah. So is it, is it the, the influence of, of the ACT Party and, and John Banks in, in changing that, that approach of the Nationals, or, or is there something else within the Nationals that's changing their, their, uh, their ideology? I, mean, I think it's the ideology that's been inherent inside the National Party actually coming to the fore now. Um, if you look at the numbers, for example, the ACT Party only um, accrued around about 1%, just mm. over 1% of the popular vote in the election. So it hardly is the, the, the in, a, in a position where it can wave a stick at National and force it into such policies. Um, it does seem that, um, and you've got to remember too, that the new leader of the ACT Party, uh, John Banks, well, in the 90s, he was the Minister of Local Government and Minister of Police um, so for the National Party. Um, so he only just joined the ACT Party only as a matter of months prior to this last election. Okay. So it's really, I think, what the Nationals are setting up is the ACT Party to be the vehicle for some of these more radical extreme policies um, rather than inside the National Party apparatus where potentially some of its more moderate centrist MPs can have a go at it and, and, and vote them down in caucus. So, you know, it seems like that's what's what's going on here, but it's, it's, it's quite different to definitely this charter school has taken the public by surprise, right. taken yeah. the media by surprise, and uh, certainly has taken the education um, ministry um, people by surprise as well, Peter. What's happening with uh, Labour and their leadership woes? Uh, have they okay. uh, selected a new leader as yet, or what's happening? <laughs> Uh, the leadership roadshow, as, as it's been <laughs> oh, okay. titled here. Yeah. Um, yeah, the two Davids, it's wheedled down to David Shearer and David Cunliffe um, as the two main runners in this, and uh, it will be out of those two. They've been going around the party faithful and meeting at meetings, like last night, for example. They uh, attended a meeting of 400 party faithful in Wellington um, where they addressed them. Um, that Both of them are pitching uh, on a platform of this is a new face and you know that they each have the skills of um, regenerating this party, realigning the party to the public's need. And uh, that goes to the vote on Tuesday, Peter, um, on the 13th of December. And that's the day that uh, Phil Goff, um, the Labour leader, formally stands down and uh, the caucus will vote one of these two in. The two differences between them, and David Shearer mentioned briefly on your programme last week, I think, that uh, he, he uh, has a background in United Nations humanitarian efforts and operations around the world, um, vast experience up until three years ago, um, leading teams in Somalia, uh, Lebanon, uh, Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, he, he's well, wild, widely respected for the work he did there. Um, David Cunliffe, um, to compare, he's been a diplomat for New Zealand. He's um, uh, spent time at Harvard University, very bright. He's a slick pol- politician, very slick operator. Uh, he, he, he is very strong in debate, whereas if you compare to David Shearer, 
David Shearer has a slight hesitancy, a bit like me when I'm talking, Peter, you can see the hesitancy sometimes, he's a bit like that. And some are saying, well, maybe that will be a weakness when he's taking on this very popular Prime Minister, John Key. But then others are saying, uh, David Shearer is the new face that the country needs. They need a clean slate. They do not need politicians that have been attached to past administrations and past failures. So... Tuesday, the, Tuesday uh, you'll, you'll, Party you'll yeah. have a no, an answer, all right? And you can fill us in next week when we speak to you again. So, many thanks. <laughs> and okay, uh, now we uh, need to give you your new web address for, for news. Uh, oh, yeah. li- livenews.co.nz uh, yeah. for all the latest from New Zealand. Uh, very nice website too. Plenty on there and a lot of interactive stuff too. Yeah, so, totally uh, multimedia kind of thing. So yeah. we, it'll get cracking really well in the next few months. Fantastic. So head there, livenews.co.nz. So, one, many thanks. Talk to you next week. Okay, Peter. Take thanks. care. Bye-bye. Bye. It's uh, coming up to 29 minutes past five now. Anne Stone has a full update of uh, new sport and weather in just a moment.